Hello. A pleasant day to all of you. Today we will discuss the different types of plate boundaries. The objectives that we are going to tackle in this lesson are as follows. Enumerate the three types of plate boundaries. Explain the processes that occur along convergent boundary, divergent boundary, and transform fault boundary. Determine the consequences of colliding plates, diverging plates, and two plates sliding past each other. Explain the effects of these consequences to the human lives, and the environment. But before we discuss the different types of plate boundaries, we recall first tectonic plates. Tectonic plates are pieces of solid rock, generally composed of both continental and oceanic crusts. Continental plate Continental plate is the layer of the Earth's crust that is made of granite, sedimentary, and metamorphic rocks, and is less dense than the oceanic crust. It is found beneath the continents and the areas of shallow seabed, close to their shores, known as continental shelves. Oceanic plate Oceanic plate is denser than continental plate because it is composed of basaltic rocks, which are much denser and heavier called lithospheric plate. It is found under the oceans or seas. A feature unique to oceanic crust is that, there are areas known as mid-ocean ridges, where oceanic crust is still being created. There are three types of plate boundaries. They are convergent plate boundary, divergent plate boundary, and transform fault boundary. What processes happens at these plate boundaries? What are the events and geologic features occur in these boundaries? The first type of plate boundary is called convergent plate boundary. In this plate boundary, two plates move towards each other. As the two plates collide each other, consequences may happen. Convergent plate boundary may occur between oceanic to continental plates, between two oceanic plates, and between two continental plates. The first convergent plate boundary happens when an oceanic plate collide with a continental plate. The oceanic plate plunges beneath the continental plate. Why is this so? Oceanic plate is denser than continental plate. That's why it sinks under the continental plate. This process is called subduction. It occurs at the oceanic trenches. The entire region is known as a subduction zone. Subduction zones have a lot of intense earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. The subducting plate causes melting in the mantle above the plate. The magma rises and erupts, creating volcanoes. These coastal volcanic mountains are found in a line above the subducting plate. The volcanoes are known as a volcanic arc. The movement of crust and magma causes earthquakes. Next we discuss the convergence between two oceanic plates. In this convergence, the older and denser oceanic crust subducts beneath the less dense oceanic crust. The subducting plate is heated as it is forced deeper into the mantle. The subducting plate begins to melt. Magma chambers are produced as a result of this melting, and the magma has a lower density than the surrounding rock material. It begins ascending by melting and fracturing its way through the overlying rock material. Magma chambers that reach the surface break through to form a volcanic eruption cone. In the early stages of this type of boundary, the cones will be deep beneath the ocean surface, but later grow to be higher than sea level. This produces an island chain called the island arcs. With continued development the islands grow larger, merge, and an elongate land mass is created. Other consequences found at this type of plate boundary include, a zone of progressively deeper earthquakes, tsunamis oceanic trenches, and the destruction of oceanic lithosphere. The last type of convergent plate boundary is a convergence between two continental plates. 
In this type of convergent boundary, a powerful collision occurs. Since neither plate is stronger than the other, they crumple and are pushed up. This can lead to the formation of huge, high mountain ranges. Continent-to-continent -continent convergence creates some of the world's largest mountains ranges, like the famous Himalayas mountain range. Magma cannot penetrate this thick crust, so there are no formation of volcanoes. With enormous slabs of crust smashing together, continent-continent collisions bring on numerous and large earthquakes. Another type of plate boundary, is a divergent plate boundary. Divergent boundaries exist, where tectonic plates move apart from each other. Unlike convergent boundaries, divergence occurs between only oceanic, or only continental plates. The vast majority of divergent boundaries are found in the ocean, like the mid-Atlantic ridges. In divergent zones the plates are pulled, and not pushed apart. The main force that drives this plate motion, is the slab pull that arises when denser oceanic plates sink, into the mantle under their own weight, at subduction zones in a convergent boundary. Divergent plate boundary occurs above rising convection currents. The rising current pushes up, on the bottom of the lithosphere, lifting it and flowing laterally beneath it. This lateral flow causes the plate material above, to be dragged along in the direction of flow. At the crest of the uplift, the overlying plate is stretched thin, breaks and pulls apart. Another type of divergent boundary is a divergence occurs on continental crust. In this type of plate boundary, continental crust rips apart. However, in continental rifting, the pull apart is not vigorous, enough to create a single break through the thick plate material. Here the thick continental plate is arched upwards, from the upward force caused convection current underneath, pulled thin by extensional forces, and fractured into a rift-shaped structure. Shown in figure 1, as the two continental plates pull apart, normal faults develop on both sides of the rift, and the central blocks slide downwards. Earthquakes occur as a result of this fracturing and movement. Early in the rift forming process, streams and rivers will flow into the sinking rift valley, to form a long linear lake. In figure 2, as the rift grows deeper, it might drop below sea level, allowing ocean waters to flow in. This will produce a narrow, shallow sea within the rift. In figure 3, this rift can then grow deeper and wider. If rifting continues, a new ocean basin could be produced. Divergence along oceanic plate When a divergent boundary occurs beneath oceanic lithosphere, the rising convection current below lifts the lithosphere, producing a mid-ocean ridge. Extensional forces stretch the lithosphere, and produce a deep fissure. When the fissure opens, pressure is reduced on the superheated mantle material below. It responds by melting, and the new magma flows into the fissure. The magma then solidifies and the process repeats itself. Transform Fault Boundary In this boundary two plates slide past one another. They are also called conservative boundary, because crust is neither destroyed nor created along them. Transform boundaries are most common on the seafloor, where they form oceanic fracture zones. An example of this is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. When they occur on land, they produce faults. Take a look at this diagram. It this diagram shows how the fracture and fault lines typically connect offsetting divergent zones. All right, we've done so far. This time, you will answer three questions to assess your learning. Mention at least two geologic features occur in the following plate boundaries. A convergent boundary B. Divergent Boundary C. Transform Fault Boundary Explain briefly the geologic processes in these three types of plate boundaries. Explain how these different geologic events such as tsunamis, 
or earthquakes affect our lives and the environment? I hope you've answered these questions correctly. So, this is all for now. See ya for another video lesson. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. God bless.